This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Apple ProRes is a family of media codecs. In this short video tutorial, I'll explain what the different versions of ProRes are and how to pick the right version for your next video project. There are seven different flavors of ProRes. There's ProRes Proxy, ProRes 422LT, 422-422-HQ, 4x4, 4x4-XQ, and ProRes RAW. If we start first with ProRes Proxy, it's 70% smaller than ProRes 422 with a frame size which is 50% the size. So we save 70% in file space by shifting over to ProRes Proxy. If we move to H.264, it's about 90% smaller than ProRes 4 to 2, again at 50% resolution. The problem is that we can't use proxy files for final output. The resolution is half of what we shot. It's really designed to simplify rough cuts and especially multicam work. If we're working for yourself, ProRes Proxy is a much more efficient, easier to edit format than H.264. If you're sending files to another editor collaborating on the same project, H.264 files are much smaller than ProRes Proxy. My recommendation is that use ProRes Proxy for multicam editing and whenever you're working with large frame sizes or you have a slower computer. If editing efficiency is important, pick the ProRes Proxy version. And if file size reduction is the most important, work with H.264. When it comes to the other flavors of ProRes, though, what we're principally getting is differences in file size and, to a lesser extent, improvements in image quality. According to Apple's ProRes white paper, if we set ProRes 4 to 2 equal to 100% for the file size to store one hour, ProRes LT saves us 30% in file space. ProRes Proxy saves us 70%, but we can't use it for final output. ProRes HQ is 50% larger than ProRes 4 to 2. ProRes 4x4 is about double, and ProRes 4x4 XQ is about three and a half times larger than ProRes 4 to 2. Most of the time, if you're shooting material with a camera, you want to convert it to Apple ProRes 4 to 2. It's my preference for all camera shot media. If you're working with multicam or large frame sizes, you're going to get much smoother editing with much less wear and tear on your storage if you do your rough cut using ProRes Proxy. If you record material on the computer as opposed to on a camera, if you record material on the computer, you're best off working with ProRes 4x4. While ProRes 422 HQ is a slightly higher image quality than 422, most of the time you're not going to see a difference. ProRes 4x4XQ is a higher potential image quality than 4x4, but again, most of the time, you're not going to see a difference. So my recommendation is, when you're working with large frame sizes or multicam and you're rough cutting, work with ProRes Proxy. If you're shooting mid media with a camera, work with ProRes 4 to 2 unless you can see artifacts in the conversion in which case step up to ProRes 4 to 2 HQ. If you're creating materials with the camera, doing screen records or After Effects or motion files, those should be exported as Apple ProRes 4x4. And if you're seeing slight color shifts, exported as ProRes 4x4 XQ, although I have yet to see a color effect in 4x4 that's even noticeable, much less objectionable. Now, there is a different format called ProRes RAW. What ProRes RAW is, is a direct recording from the camera sensor of the individual sensor data. Now, ProRes RAW, unlike any other video format, is not video. It's actually data. It needs to be converted from data into video in a process called debayering. There's two flavors of ProRes RAW. There's ProRes RAW and ProRes RAW HQ. Both have to be recorded on the camera. You cannot convert to ProRes RAW after the image is shot. If you have images with more detail or sensor noise, they create larger files. Why? Because ProRes RAW records a variable data rate depending upon what the sensor data is. All the other ProRes flavors record a constant data rate 
which means that even if a file gets noisy, the size of the file does not increase. Although ProRes RAW is a really useful format, it's not as useful as shooting a log format. You still get the same flexibility in terms of how you craft your exposures, but the extra steps necessary for processing a RAW file, which don't exist with log or other video files, means that you have a much harder time in post-production getting your files prepped and your final color correction done. Although it's useful to have ProRes RAW available to us, your best option is to shoot log if you need more control over the actual color of the, of the image during post-production. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar presenting Apple Final Cut Pro Power Tips. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 344. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.